What the f is this? Evoker is advanced, and for experienced players only? Well, I guess demon hunters won't be able to reroll in Dragonflight. <clears throat> Anyway, Alpha dropped on Thursday and Skill Capped was there to play around with the new Evoker class. In this video, we will be giving you our first impressions, as well as covering some of the key abilities in their toolkit. So stay tuned for this Devastation Evoker preview. First things first, what is the DPS Evoker all about? Well, it's sort of like an elemental shaman combined with a demon hunter. It has multiple spell schools, tons of utility options, and is incredibly mobile. Generally speaking, it will probably be a relatively annoying class to play against in PvP, since it has a few slippery mechanics that make its teammates really difficult to kill. Let's break it down. First, we have some of its really interesting and unique spells. Time Stop is first on our list. This PvP talent will make friendly targets immune for 4 seconds, freezing all buffs and debuffs in the process. While this might not seem that amazing on a 2 minute cooldown, it's pretty much a bubble you can use on anyone on your team. Ideally, you would use this on your partners at high HP while they are stuck in a stun against huge burst damage, effectively stopping an entire go. On the offensive side, Chrono Loop is an exciting new PvP talent with flexible usage. It will snapshot an enemy target's health and location, and then 5 seconds Seconds later, return the enemy player to where the snapshot took place. This will be amazing on offense for training down targets and preemptively denying heals. Imagine tunneling a resto shaman, getting them low in a stun, and then using chrono loop to deny any heals from spirit link or ascendance. It's a great tool to keep up pressure. And you could even use it defensively while kiting, snapshotting an enemy in place while you cross the map to safety. And speaking of defensive options, Evoker comes equipped with Fly With Me, which you can use to teleport a party member to a targeted location. This could be used as a peel on your partner getting trained, immediately putting them out of harm's way, especially when combined with the Twin Guardian talent that goes with it. And finally, there is a potentially game-breaking talent called Oppressing Roar, which increases the duration of the next CC on the target by 50%. This could obviously be comboed with your partner's stuns, for instance a 6 second kidney shot, to last 9 seconds in theory. It just so happens to perfectly synergize with a long CC of your own called Sleepwalk, which is an incapacitate that causes targets to walk towards you, perfect for luring enemy healers out of line of sight for setups, but with a 15 second cooldown and a cast time, it probably will be difficult to utilize as cross CC on off targets. Their entire toolkit is enhanced with their insane mobility, most notably Hover. This launches the player forward and grants a movement speed increase and the ability to cast while moving for 6 seconds, all of which can be enhanced with two talents called Tailwind and Aerial Mastery. Think of this ability kind of like a mage's shimmer. It could be used both aggressively to push in for setups or to quickly evade attacks, all while zooming around at 70% movement speed while casting. Finally, we have our last unique Evoker ability, which you've probably seen before. Or deep Breath. This is a classic Onyxia mechanic that has been recycled into a class ability. Our initial thoughts is that it's probably not that amazing. While you can give it a stun with the talent deep in the Evoker tree, its slow startup animation and travel time make it too laggy to reliably use in PvP outside of huge setups. For this reason, it might be used as a gimmicky bursting tool, but good Evokers might actually use it as an escape tool. Because it grants CC immunity, it can be used to quickly move across the map and avoid setups. Evoker also comes equipped with an interrupt called Quell, which isn't too exciting with a 25 yard range, a 20 second cooldown when talented, and a 4 second lockout. This puts it in the middle of wind shear and counterspell. Again, not that amazing, but a kick is a kick. Of course, we mentioned that Evoker comes equipped with some interesting utility. We already mentioned Fly With Me and its twin guardian talent, but Evoker has a baseline poison to spell on an 8 second cooldown, combined with a longer dispel that removes bleeds, poisons, curses, and diseases. Yeah, so pretty much Mending Bandage. This will make it incredibly strong into Assassination Rogues and Feral Druids for obvious reasons, especially since it is instant and will heal for every removed effect. On top of that, healers should love playing with evokers due to the source of magic buff, which will periodically restore mana when specific spells are used. We've seen similar mechanics in the past like Greater Blessing of Wisdom from Rhett Paladins in Legion and BFA, and these types of mechanics give a distinct advantage for winning resource battles in longer dampening games. Another party buff offered by Evoker is Blessing of the Bronze, which grants 15% cooldown reduction on the mobility spells we have listed here. Just like Arcane Intellect and Power Word Fortitude, this buff will affect 
affect everyone in your party or raid. The standouts are likely Death's Advance, Blink, Leap of Faith, Sprint, Warlock Port, and Heroic Leap. The rest aren't nearly as impactful. And as a final minor note, Evokers come equipped with a res. Not the biggest deal, but just something to keep in mind if you manage to score a kill against their partner in Arena or RBGs. But enough about utility, what about their own defensive CDs? Defensively, Evokers have two major cooldowns. The first is Obsidian Scales, which is more or less a bark skin, but it's unclear whether or not it will be usable while stunned. Since it is based on armor values, it theoretically should get better with higher item level gear. This ability isn't that exciting and will probably be more useful for preservation Evokers with the Obsidian Metal PvP talent, which turns it into an aura mastery. The other major cooldown for Evoker is an optional talent called Renewing Blaze. This will convert all damage taken for 8 seconds into a 14 second hot. You can empower this self heal with one of two talents, either causing more healing or reducing its cooldown, the latter of which we predict will be better for the majority of matchups. Think of this like any other major self heal or even like the old temporal shield for mages. It will be great to use the moment your healer gets CC'd if you want the best chance of surviving enemy setups, especially when kiting away. Now you might be wondering, how is their damage kit designed? Well, like many other classes, they have builders, which are either spammable or have a short cooldown, and finishers, which require spending their unique resource, Essence. Essence functions similar to DK runes, passively regenerating over time, but can be randomly generated with specific enhancements. Their actual damage abilities are split between two schools, Frost and Fire. Frost is more single target oriented, with snares to keep targets immobile, while fire is more AoE focused and includes more damage over time and cleave effects. One key spell on the fire tree is fire breath, which isn't that amazing on its own, but with a PvP talent has the ability to remove up to 4 beneficial buffs and can be made instant with a cooldown called tip the scales. Sorry resto druids, you thought kleptomania was bad, this is even worse. Something unique to Evoker is the Empower mechanic, which causes certain spells to have increasingly stronger effects depending on how long they get channeled. And as we just mentioned, Tip the Scales makes these spells instant and fully empowered, somewhat similar to a mage's presence of mind. If we had to guess, the majority of their damage in PvP will come from Frost spells and will likely involve using Azure Strike and Living Flame as a spammable builders, with Disintegrate and Charge Blast as spenders. Since Evoker has both Frost and Fire schools, it's likely that both will be used regularly to deal with lockouts. Getting kicked onto a Disintegrate channel, for instance, allows you to cast Fire spells like Living Flame and Pyre. And on a final note, Evoker has a damaging ability called Unravel, which specifically targets shields. It is on the Spell Frost school, which is Arcane and Frost combined, giving it another way to manage interrupts. And since Evokers are a hybrid, they come equipped with a few heals. First is a spammable one called Living Flame, which is their equivalent of hybrid heals like Healing Surge, Regrowth, or Shadow Mend. It can be empowered with a talent called Ancient Flame, reducing its cast times on subsequent uses. They also have an instant burst healing option with Rescue, which also doubles as a mobility tool since it ports them to a party member. This could have flexible uses, either to push in for a go, or to kite away, or simply to just heal a partner instantly. Finally, they have a weaker AoE heal, which has a pretty high essence requirement, but might come in handy for mitigating dot damage behind a pillar. As a final note, you might be wondering about the new Dragon Racials. Well, they got the best of a few worlds, with both a knockback and a knockup on a 1.5 minute cooldown. Either one of these can have their CD cut in half with an optional talent. Note that they don't share a cooldown, meaning they can be chained together. Finally, dragons come equipped with Glide, which is nearly identical to the one you know from Demon Hunters. So, TLDR, Evoker is quite unique, and once again it seems to be an elemental shaman slash demon hunter hybrid, pairing mid-range spells and zoning tools with tons of mobility and utility options. It's unclear how it will fit into comp selection, but since it has both an incapacitate and the ability to increase stun durations, you already know it might work well with classes like rogues, and with its utility, it might be a really good match for warriors with dampening setups. And with a knock-up, knock-back, and slow-fall mechanic as well as party-wide mobility CDR, we definitely see utility for evokers in some Dragon Flight RBG lineups. But we want to know what you think. Based on what you've seen so far, what do you expect from evokers in Dragon Flight? Let us know in the comments below. And whether you're looking to grind Shadowlands Season 4 or stay ahead of the meta next expansion, Skillcapped has you covered with a rating gain guarantee. We currently have over 600 class courses and a thousand arena commentaries, all of which will be updated before Dragon Flight even releases. 
releases. So don't fall behind. Learn how to play Evoker like a pro later this year at skillcap.com. Anyways, guys, that about wraps it up for this one. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. If you want to see more content for Dragonflight, Wrath of the Lich King Classic, or of course Shadowlands, be sure to hit that subscribe button. As always, though, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.